Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Agile Tester Sample Questions. And uh, here we are discussing about several types of sample questions to help you assist do a better preparation and succeed with your examinations attempt in the first go. So right here today we'll be getting into the chapter 3. So far we have covered chapter 1 and 2 and it's time for us to see some of the questions from chapter 3 which is the testing methods in Agile techniques and tools related to it. The very first question we are looking at today is question number 26, which says which of the following statement about the test driven development that is TDD is false. Again, I think uh, by now you should have figured out the ways you need to tackle the questions. Here, the only important thing is you should have the definition of TDD with you. And second important thing is to concentrate on the word false because they are not looking for something which is true. The only difference which happens is if you don't read the question carefully, you may think it as true and you would say, you know, there were more than one option which were correct. And yes, there are three options which are true. There's only one which is false. So it's very natural that you would feel that I'm getting confused, but you're not getting confused because of your knowledge. You're getting confused because you didn't read the question carefully. So let's see which one of the following statement is incorrect, that is false. And the option A says TDD is a test first approach to develop reusable automated test. I think no questions to be asked given that the basic context of uh, TDD is all about test driven development. And of course the test drives the development in that context, the test creation happens prior to development and are reusable uh, at that point of time. That means they can be used later as well and they are in the automated format. That means they are not manual test cases. So A is absolutely true. B, the TDD cycle is continuously used until the software product is released. That's again very totally true that the process of TDD is generally repeated for each small piece of code running to the previous test as well as the added test consistently to make sure that everything is well established as we move ahead with the you know addition of new set of codes till the release. Option C says TDD helps to document the code for future maintenance efforts. Um, absolutely yes, the test does serve as a form of executable design specification for future maintenance effort because it gives us all that understanding what we really need to implement in the code, right? So it's not that we are just writing certain automated tests which probably are one-time usable. No, they are reusable. If you say reusable from the step number one, that is uh, option A, then C should not be conflicting because it helps to document the code in a fashion that could help for future maintenance effort because to do regressions for the maintenance you do need these set of test cases which are called as reusable test. So I think we already justified that the ABC is incorrect, but let's cross check that if in case we are going wrong. So it's very important to be sure about all the four options by just making a small decision. Option D says the result of TDD are test classes used by developer to develop test cases. Ah, that's a tricky one. This is true about BDD but not TDD okay so the result of TDD test cases are useful to create test cases for BDD okay not for TDD because in TDD anyways tests are created already so why an approach where test is already created will help again to prepare the test no it just helps you to refrain and uh, redesign your code rather than refining the test cases okay you just refine the development code rather than the uh, test cases. So in that context put together, the right answer here is D, the result of test cases, a uh, result of TDD are test classes used by developer to develop the test cases for BDD and it is false about TDD. Let's look at the next question. We got question number 27. What does the term test parameter refer to and illustrate situation four? So first of all, again, these type of questions are very, very straightforward. That means the more you know about the content, that will help you to answer. Okay, here we don't have any kind of trick or any kind of tips involved. Uh, if you have been through the syllabus, you know what exactly they're looking for. If you don't know what is the definition of test pyramid and what's the concept of it, it does not help you to answer that question. So in this case, I would say 
having hold of the syllabus is equally important and given that you know what exactly the context and concept of test parameters that will help you to lead to the right answer anyway so the options we have here is a the team's testing workload increases from sprint to sprint now say for example we're talking about test pyramid test pyramid basically represents that we do more automation and more testing in, in the initial part of the life cycle rather than later levels of testing like you know we do more unit testing compared to that of the system and acceptance and we do more automation testing compared to that of manual in agile so in that context the workload for each sprint has nothing to do with the test pyramid the test pyramid concept is all about that where do you put more effort when it comes to initial levels of testing versus later level of testing and second is the amount of automation versus manual so where is the workload in this right the workload has nothing to do with the test pyramid concept b the backlog size and thus the number of tests decreases so test pyramid again testing the testing backlog and number of tests has nothing to do with the test pyramid and uh, the concept does not say that the backlog size will be defined just because of the test pyramid or uh, the number of tests will decrease because of it. this is completely hypothetical and in fact not even valid in any sense right because test pyramid talks about the amount of effort you put on different levels and the approach being used for testing see the number of automated unit tests is higher than the number of automated tests for higher test levels I think this is what I was explaining you in option A and B. So probably we don't have to repeat that. But again, just a one liner as I'm used to it. So unit testing, uh, initial levels, we do more automated tests compared to later uh, levels of testing that are system and acceptance. So C looks absolutely right. But uh, still let's cross check with option D. The D says the number of automated tests in place increases from sprint to sprint. Again, it's going completely in line with option A right which is workload being increased sprint by sprint the same way number of tests being sprint uh, increased by spare so sprint to sprint is incorrect the number of automated tests has nothing to do with the concept of test mirabed in agile so very straightforward putting up all together and the right answer here is c the number of automated unit tests is higher than the number of automated tests for any other higher levels which is related to the concept of test pyramid. Well, moving on to the last question for the day, which is again to question number 28, which of the following demonstrates effective use of testing quadrants, which is a part of the, you know, you know, testing methodology where under the test pyramids, you look forward to have the detailed explanation of what is the testing quadrant and what are the four quadrants, right? So we have four quadrants here and we need to understand what is q1 q2 q3 q4 what is technology facing what is business facing and what is fully automated what is fully manual and sort of thing right so all these things should be taken into account in order to answer this type of question and the better you have the understanding of it that would help you to answer so which of the following demonstrates effective use of testing quadrants so number a that is option a when communicating test ideas the tester can refer to the matching test quadrant so that the rest of the team will better understand the purpose of the test. I think that's something really, really significant enough when it comes to the um, test quadrants because a team need to understand. So testing quadrants certainly can be used as an aid to describe the types of tests to all the stakeholders. Now, people can uh, be, you know, certainly asking you certain questions that, hey, where are you expecting to do unit testing? Where are you expecting to do system testing? And where I can get involved as a business where a developer should be involved in performing certain tasks. So communicating the test ideas should be basically referring to match that respective quadrant because each quadrant, the four quadrants, each of them are specific to a particular objective and interaction and with roles and responsibility. So this looks kind of correct right now, but not sure, so let's check it out. The option B says the tester can use the types of tests described in testing quadrant as a coverage metric. The more tests covered in each quadrant, the higher the test coverage. I think that's a little tricky statement because we never spoke about the coverage measurement. Rather, when we discussed about this, we indeed spoke about 
that how the test levels are organized and conducted in four different quadrants and who gets involved, uh, what's the approach of it. So we, we didn't talk about the coverage. So this is not a good metric since not all the test levels or types are applicable for a given system, right? So in that context, I cannot go and tell them <coughs> that, uh, you know, each quadrant talks about unit integration system and acceptance. So it will help me to get complete coverage measurement right at the quadrant one or right at the quadrant two. I need to complete all the four quadrants just like an EO, right? If you talk about a financial year, it starts from April to March. So until unless you close March, you cannot tell me that what was your total billing, what was your total profit, a lot many other things, right? So every single quarter brings something new to you. So in that context, this is a very invalid statement. C, the team should pick a number of tests expected from each quadrant and the tester should design and execute those tests to ensure all the levels and types of tests have been executed. Now, that's another <laughs> a funny statement rather, I would say the number of tests for each quadrant is dependent on the system and the test, which every one of us understand it very clear that when it comes to defining the number of test cases, it totally depends on the type of application along with this criticality and complexity, etc., not the quadrant, right? So it depends on the system and the test and certainly uh, rarely be equal to the quadrants. It might be distributed and the size will be different. So in some situations, there may not be any test for a quadrant. It's not necessary at all, right? So that making that generic statement is not possible that the team should pick up a number of tests expected for each quadrant and then testers should design the execute and test. No, we don't do that, right? Coming to option D, the tester can use testing quadrants during risk analysis with the lower level quadrants representing lower risk to the customers. Now again, risk analysis is totally different thing, right, compared to what we are doing here. So the testing quadrants have no correlation with the risk level because risk level is more about analyzing a risk and then determining the, you know, the risk factor or risk number using the assessment procedure, which is done by the likelihood and impact, right? The measurement of two different parameters, likelihood, which is probability of that event to happen, and impact is the impact of it, right? So that's how you define the level of risk. But when it comes to talking about quadrants, we put the effort rather, right? We are not saying that the lower level quadrants will represent lower risk, no. If you think errors can be mitigated earlier, you can start with quadrant one, right? And then if you think it is a business related risk, then we can only address it quite in Q3 or Q4. So in that context, we just say that it's not that about lower and upper, you know, has lower level of risk and all. So risk has no correlation with the quadrants. So in that context, again, putting up all together, the right answer here is A, when communicating test ideas, the tester can refer to the matching test quadrant so that the rest of the team will be better understanding the purpose of the test so that they can correlate that where is it a unit thing or is it an integration system or acceptance, right? And who should be responsible to do that? These are the things what we talk in the test quadrant and that helps us to align a test to that of the quadrant. Anyways, uh, we just had good, some good cl glimpse about the chapter three questions and things will be a little tricky, right? So we'll be looking forward to have more questions in coming up tutorials. And uh, that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. We'll be uh, always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.